Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank, thanks for sharing that information. Yes, sir. So, yeah, because, it, yeah, look, that's part of what I'm trying to do with this podcast is, you know, to introduce people to, to people who have uh, information, have stories to tell, who have experiences to share, because, you know, that's the way we learn. We learn through experience, but it doesn't have to be your experience. You know, if, you, if there's something that, that you've gone through that you can share with somebody that, that prevents them from having to, to deal with some of the uh, basically the shit that you've had to deal with in your life or I've had to deal with in my life. Uh, you know, that's I think that is what we're here on Earth for. You know, we're here to help other people to be better uh, through our uh, our achievements and through our mistakes. So. I agree 100%. And, and, and let me just add to that, if I may. And, and you know, I, I, I didn't used to talk about this a lot, but, but I, I found that with the different situations that people are faced with, some people, you know, it's addiction to alcohol or, or trendy chemicals. Um, some people, it's their weight. Some people, it's their personality, which they're not going to do much about, which I've suffered from in the past, too. I haven't always been uh, the go-be-awesome guy. Sometimes, uh, Sometime in my early uh, life, mostly as I look back on it because I was morbidly obese, and every time I walked past the mirror, I would be disgusted with myself, and I was so full of self-hate and shame that I put on myself um, – I couldn't function around other people. I wasn't a good partner. I wasn't a good friend. I just wasn't a good human being. And, and I feel like I'm on a journey toward being, being much better. But there's something about me. And, and, and if, if anybody wants to just buzz by the old Instagram account, uh, Trumpet Vinny, uh, V-I-N-N-I-E, all one word, and just look at what, I, what we call the blue screens. So if you, if you listen to these blue screens, basically what they are is a little 15 second snippet of whatever we've done in the studio that day. And there's hundreds of them, maybe thousands now. Um, and it gives you an idea of what we're doing in the studio and what I sound like as a trumpet player. So um, when I was 25 years old, uh, one day on a gig with this R&B band that I was with, I sneezed. And I used to hold my sneezes in, you know, I would, I would do that thing. And right on the back of my head right here, I got this, uh, it felt like a shock. Like if you could imagine a big oak tree and if you took a battery terminal, a battery and just shocked the bottom of the tree and it went up the tree and went out all of the branches. It, fe- it was about the size of a quarter and it was really strange, man. And I was like, golly, what was that? I sat down and, you know, people thought I was having a stroke and all kind of different stuff. I woke up the next day and it was dead numb. Absolutely couldn't feel a thing there. And I was like, golly. So I started going to the doctor. Uh, about three days later, it happened again. Only this time when I sneezed, I let the sneeze go. And that nerve came over the top of my head and went down the side of my face. And when I woke up the next day, I couldn't feel anything on the left side of my entire head. Uh, Straight down the middle, everything on the left is completely numb. Like when, you know what it feels like when your foot or your leg falls asleep? Yeah. Not the pins and needles, but that dead, you can't even stand up feeling, that's what it feels like. So then uh, it happened again. And it went all the way down my body, all the way down to my toes. Um, I found out through going to the doctor that it's, uh, it's called a syrinx or syringeomyelia. It's this long cyst uh, that looks a little bit like a pencil. It's about that long. There are different lengths for different people. Uh, inside of my spinal cord, it's a congenital condition. Um, and so... I had an operation when I was 25 years old. They caught up on the back of my neck and took a vertebrae off and they drained it and they put a, a little teeny tiny um, uh, shunt in it and it, it drains and dissipates down my spinal cord. To this day, sitting here in front of you right now, I cannot feel anything on the left side of my body, my hands, my face, my leg. When I got out of the hospital, I couldn't walk because I couldn't tell where I was putting the pressure on my heel. And, and I, I just, I couldn't coordinate it. So it took me a little while to learn how to walk. Um, so for me to be able to play trumpet, not feeling half of my face, half of my diaphragm, not being able to feel 
how I manipulate the first and third uh, valve slides. Um, at this level um, that, I, that I've been able to achieve through really, really diligent and tenacious practicing is nothing short of a miracle, yeah. in, in my opinion. The fact that I can ride a bike, now, you know, I'm not gonna win the Tour de France, Matter of fact, I'm going to be the guy that's the very <laughs> last cat going up those hills, but I enjoy it so much, and it's, it's saved my life. It's right. saved my health being able to jump on that bike, burn a couple calories, so if I want to have a glass of wine at night or if I want to have a Twinkie if I want, you know, I can have a Twinkie. Um, it, I, I, I tell you this not so you'll feel sorry for me because that would be ridiculous looking at, you know, my life. Uh, there's there's <laughs> There's – I just keep waiting for the other shoe to drop. Everything is, everything is awesome. I mean, it's incredible. I got an incredible kids. I got an incredible family. I met a woman that I love more than anything on earth. I've got an incredible and prolific career. I am blessed beyond any measure uh, that, you, that you could put to it. But uh, to be able to play and do the things that I, that I can do is, is just miraculous. It really is. I'm very, very thankful. I work really, really hard, and I want to encourage anybody that's running into issues, whether it is morbidly obese or with addiction or some sort of physical malady. You never know what people are walking around with, man. Yeah. Everybody's got something, right? Absolutely. Everybody's got some. Some people, it's really obvious because it's their personality, and you're like, God, what a jerk. But other people have these incredible underlying things. Um, that bubble to the surface and, and kind of come out their, you know, their mouth or their spirit or whatever the deal is. And so until you've walked a mile uh, or hobbled along a mile, and somebody <laughs> else you, in my case, or until you've tried to play a double C when you can't feel the left side of your chops, man, just give that person the benefit of the doubt. Let them prove you wrong. Um, always expect the best from everybody. And, and then just let them make their own bed. You know what I mean? And that's what this whole thing has taught me. So, and, and I'll be done with this in a second, man. I'm, I'm, I know it's a long story, but I, Sorry. for 25 years, I've been wondering, because you, you remember Christopher Reeves, Superman? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, he, he snapped his neck and, and then he was kind of the poster child for uh, spinal cord injury. And, and mm -hmm. then, and, you know, Nick Bonacani, who was a, a, a Miami Dolphin, his son, uh, uh, was a paraplegic and they started the, the Nick Bonacani project and they've been making so much progress with reattaching basically your brain to your body. I always thought in the back of my mind for the last 20, 25 plus years, maybe there's a way they can fix this. You know, what, what if there's a way they can fix this? I was always super scared to go to the doctor because I didn't want to hear the answer one way right. or the other. And so I finally went last year in December. I got a complete physical. I told my doctor about it. He said, man, let's just get you to a neurologist and let's see what's going on. So we set it up. I had an MRI, took a picture of it, and I went in. And the guy, you know, it's like he's like a mini version of me. He's a bald guy. He's a little shorter than I am. He's like, hey, how you doing? You know, that kind of guy. <laughs> and I, I sat down with him. And before I could tell him my story, he looks at me and he, and he tells me what it is. It's a, it's a syrinx and it's a syringeal, whatever it's called. I did a bunch of research on it. And, um, and I said, well, listen, man, and I told him the story. I just told you, you know, Christopher Reeves and, and reattaching nerves and all that kind of stuff. And before I could get the end of the sentence, he looked at me and he said, oh, you're never going to get any of that back. Never. And I was just, I started crying. I mean, I was crestfallen. And I said, dude, do you realize what 25 years of living with this is like and the hope that I had? And you just seriously just chopped me off at the neck. You might as well just, you know, cut off my head. And he said, well, I'm sorry, but I got to be straightforward and honest with you and let you know what you're dealing with. And at that moment, I thought, you know what? He's right. I said, is it, is it ever going to get any worse? And he said, it will never get worse. You'll never get any back and it will never get any worse. And that was like, that was another miraculous moment in my life when I found out exactly what I'm going to be dealing with for the rest of the time that I'm on this planet. And so it turned from this super defeating, like, 
soul crushing answer to one of the best moments of my life because now I got a baseline. Yeah. I yeah. know what to expect for the rest of my life. And so if, if, if you're dealing with them, we just, we, um, Jose just, and I just had a conversation about a kid that's dealing with focal dystonia. If you can get past it, man, um, or you can figure out a way to deal with it, man, just celebrate that and live in that moment and, and be positive about it and pass it on to other people and give them hope too. Because I will tell you, man, I'm, I'm on several Facebook groups that with other people that have this and they, because they have no hope, they're just miserable. They're, they're just miserable. They're fat and they're alcoholics and they're this and that and the other thing because they can't, nobody understands what they're going through. Um, but I'm telling them, look, here's the deal. It sucks. It sucks when you, you, know, you bang your hand on the, on the desk and you can't feel it. You know what I mean? It's just weird. It's so strange. But at least you know what you got and yeah. you can move forward in that direction. Anyway, that's my little yeah. soapbox for today. <laughs> oh, man, that, that's, that's, that's some great stuff. And, you know, I, I didn't realize that about you. And uh, thanks for sharing that story, because I think that, you know, if, if there's nothing else that comes out of my entire career on this podcast, I think this is going to be one of those defining things. Oh, good, man. That's awesome. Yeah, because it goes beyond just that condition. Right. Yeah. That, that's just that's the symptom. You know, the underlying problem uh, for for all of us in one way or another is just uh, the limiting beliefs that we placed on ourselves. And it'd be oh. very easy for you to have just, you know, put your horn in the case and 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 that was it. But, you know, not only have you continued to play, but you have continued to play at a high level at a world-class level. So, you know, if you're out there and you're dealing with some sort of issue, yeah, there is a solution. And the solution is just don't give up.